you have a dual pane window, you have an R value of two. Uh, if you have some of these fancy windows that are low E and argon gas and all this other kind of stuff, you have a window that has an R value of three or four. So obviously, most of your uh, heat loss and heat gain is through your windows. Um, when you add our window, you add an extra layer of insulation. Uh, it doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't make it an R10 or R20, but but it can double the insulation value of the windows that you do have. So it stops. It'll usually stop the cold drafts. So when you're walking around in the winter, your feet aren't cold and your head warm from the from the layering of the cold air in the house. It'll take care of the cold drafts significantly and and reduce the uh, um, reduce your heating and cooling bills as well. The windows will usually pay for themselves in three to eight years, depending on where you live in the country, uh, just simply from the energy savings. Sometimes they'll pay for themselves in six months if it helps you become more productive and sleep better <laughs> and not be interfered with, correct? Especially when you start putting a value in, in quality of life, uh, it, can, it can pay for itself in a matter of months. Um, or days in some cases. If you can't sleep and can't function, and all of a sudden you can get all the sleep and rest and stuff you need, uh, that can essentially be priceless. What do you think about this technology becoming more standardized? I would certainly like it to be more standardized. Um, uh, we certainly are trying to do our best to educate people as to what can be done. Um, because they're... Because builders don't want to spend extra money to put the windows in initially unless they're required to by code um, and this sort of thing. It, and because most people don't understand that they even can do this, um, it, it becomes more of a challenge in trying to get, uh, get it widespread. Um, but it's, it's certainly growing. The business is growing substantially, and more and more people are beginning to realize that if they have a noise problem, they really can do something about it rather than learn to live with it. Who are your biggest advocates? Some of my biggest advocates, um, as far as my consumers are concerned, right. is the husband or the wife that did not want the windows. And it's usually about 50-50 as to whether the husband or the wife has a noise problem, if you will. Let's say it's the husband that has the noise problem. and He wants to solve the noise problem, so he does. And so the wife gets to go to Neiman Marcus or something for a shopping trip, and he gets his windows. But the wife was not expecting all these benefits, like like the no cold drafts and how much better it is when it's quiet and everything else. So the husband got what he wanted, and the wife got all these benefits she wasn't expected. So she starts telling all her friends and saying how great it was and how wonderful it was because she got something that was completely unexpected. And I find that kind of a curious uh, thing that the the biggest advocate is the one that wasn't, you know, they they were going, they were wanting to go shopping at Home Depot or at or at the local gro- uh, local clothing store rather than buy the windows. Um, but otherwise, it's the hotels, it's the it's the um, uh, businesses, it's certainly the recording studios. Um, uh, it's everybody that gets exposed to our product. They're they're just amazed at the difference in quality of life that it can provide to them. Do you think that there will come a day in your lifetime where there will be an economy of scale type of situation where it will cost way less to install this and get it done because it's become more of a standard and people now know about it? Uh, There's certainly a lot of um, availability of uh, economy of scale. Uh, unfortunately, of course, it's not like a compu- the computer right. economy of scale. But um, uh, as more and more time goes on, our, our prices have certainly not kept up with inflation. And a lot of that is because of scale, um, of quantity, and, and efficiency of production. So so there's more that can be done with that over time. Um, um, a lot of the, the functional things of just the cost of the glass and and uh, aluminum and other things like that are, are going to keep it from being able to go substantially lower, but um, there's certainly an economy of scale um, that will that will start coming more and more into play. With the cost of energy going up and everything else, the return on investment is going to 
definitely improve. That's clear. That's very clear. Are there some hotels you can share with us that are using your technology? It's funny. There's the hotel chains aren't hotel chains like uh, Jack in the Box and uh, McDonald's and things like that. They don't. The left hand doesn't necessarily know what the right hand's doing. They're owned by different investment groups. But we we've we've, in, we've installed our windows in in Marriotts, Holiday Inns, Renaissance. Um, almost all the hotel chains uh, have have bought and purchased our windows. Um, but they. But it's not like, um, say, Marriott has decided to put our windows in uh, all the Marriotts in the country. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, uh, we're working on it, <laughs> but it hasn't happened yet. Uh, so it, it, became, it becomes more like, you know, if you're in the uh, Houston area, uh, what, would, uh, what hotel have I soundproof? Uh, that sort of thing. Are you going to bring any of this? Are you going to make this technology available in Europe? Do you have European associates? Uh, I do have qu- several people in Europe that are wanting to bring my recording studio windows to Europe um, and doors, and so that will probably be the first thing that, that goes to Europe, um, and uh, probably shortly after that we'll be, we'll be working something out to, to do the uh, soundproofing uh, uh, for the consumer homes. I think that would be great to have a division there. Really, really great. We don't ship much to Europe, but I think that's going to start changing. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us, Randall, about soundproof windows that we haven't heard and we don't know? How it can actually solve your noise problems instead of just uh, assist it a little bit and uh, um, how much it really can improve your quality of life um, and uh, your peace and quiet, your uh, your comfort in reading, your... Uh, comfort and quiet time at home, it really does make a difference to the individual when they when they uh, are around a really quiet environment. And uh, it's really it's really comforting to uh, everyone here when we get s- success stories and different people calling and saying, "You can't believe the difference you've made in my life um, because you know I can think so much clearly. I can." do things so much better. I'm not mad at everything when I'm at home. I'm calm and reserved and and that sort of thing. It's just it's really nice to be able to provide a product that that uh, the customers actually appreciate and they like. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been talking with, learning from and listening to Randall Brown, the president of Soundproof Windows, a soundproofing idea whose time has come. You can contact him and his team at soundproofwindows.com. And Randall, thank you so much for spending your time with us today. I love what you're doing. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.